This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Time to go through the building that gangs built. Greetings and salutations, viewers, while we're back here with another episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. In the last episode, we finished cleaning up in the town, bought all the stuff we can. There might still be some last minute shopping before the final mission, but for the most part, we are here to deal with Apex to either shut it down, stop it, whatever. But first, we gotta deal with some gang warfare here. Um, these arbiters want to kill some uh, mages, and we decide to agree with them. But uh, do we want them both to be around by the end of this? Well, we'll see how things go. But anyway, let's enter inside the building and head on in. See what we get. All right, what do we got? It's like a parson, huh? The attendant behind the counter is an uncommonly fine featured dwarf with a beautiful smile. A yellow ID tag pinned to his chest announces his name in large, blocky letters. Parson. He nods at you and raises a hand in gesture. Welcome to the hub, brother. Are you here to share in the splendor of communion? If so, I can show you to the, an empty terminal. What do you do here? I am the custodian of the hub. I tend to the bodies of our brothers and sisters while they share in the rapture of communion. I might be interested. Tell me more. Communion is a spiritual experience, friend, available to all for a small donation. He gestures at a bank of terminals lining the walls. The hub, a the hub acts as the core of the communion. Those who jack into it are, in turn, linked to one another, daisy-chained together at the brainstem. Race, gender, social class, all of the artificial barriers to empathy that we've constructed as a culture. Communion strips them all away. It is a monument to the great truth that so many of us deny, that we are all the same at the core. Imagine it, friend, dozens of individual minds all tied together into a single cohesive whole, sharing in a collective subconscious connected through the hub. Sounds like a legion situation going on. Parson raises his hands in supplication. Join with us and feel your limitations fall away. I'm, I'm, I'm too much of an individual to care about that stuff. So, well. <clears throat> not right now, no thanks. Parson incli uh, inclines his head. His smile does not falter. Whenever you are ready, you may return, and is there any more, any more I can help you with in the meanwhile? I have some questions about you and the local gang activity. He nods. We do seem to have more than our fair share. Very well, I will answer your questions. Should I be worried about the gang war that seems to be gearing up around us? While you remain in the hub, you have nothing to fear. We pay well for the use of this place, and neither gang would risk driving us away. And the rest of the building... He spreads his hands. If you choose to go exploring, I can't guarantee your safety. You can't tell me about the Arbiters. Parson lets out a heavy sigh. A pack of snarling animals dressed up as a poly club. I'd steer clear of them if I were you. Their ideology is loosely based on neo-communist movements from the past. In truth, I think they just copied a few pages from an old Red Army faction handy bill without ever bothering to learn what they meant. Yeah, it's like real life. For all their rhetoric, the Arbiters are just another street gang. They shout for the sake of shouting. There's no real conviction there. If you came from outside, you probably bumped into the leader, a huge orc who calls himself Ulrich. He can seem reasonable, but I'd give him a wide berth. One more note, if I were you, I'd avoid being seen with the mag Magnificers. The Arbiters take shots at members of the Mage Gang whenever they can see them. If you're not careful, you'll find yourself caught in the crossfire. Need no more about the Magnificers. Bower drunk fools, a lot of them. The Arbiters were bad enough, but the Magnificers are even worse. The Arbiter's interests were limited to theft and violence in the name of their cause. The Magnificers, they have power, and they seem to relish in abusing it. Now that they are claiming the upper levels of the building, it isn't safe to travel beyond the ground floor. Several members of a congregation have been mauled to death by the Magnificers' pet spirits. He shakes his head sadly. Now we, can, we travel in groups. You're safe down here, though. Yes, Trimenius needs the hub. To threaten this congregation would be to jeopardize his primary source of income, but the upper floors enjoy no such protection. They have become dangerous places to travel. <coughs> I'm looking for Trimenius. Any idea how I can find him? The smile fades from Parson's face. Trimenius is a dangerous man. Why do you ask? Uh, uh, Ulrich asked me to kill him. I don't care much for the idea, so I've got a counterproposal for Trimenius. He studies your face for a moment, then nods. Fair enough. Germanius is almost certainly upstairs, hidden away from the outside world. I wouldn't advise going after him, but if your mind is made up, I suppose I can't change it. Yes, I can tell you how to find him, but I need something from you in return. Yes, of course you will. Saw that's coming. Dietrich sighs. Tell us what you need. 
A pair of squatters on the second floor ripped the guts out of one of my terminals. They have taken the data jack signal converter and the terminal will be out of commission until I get it back. A single damaged terminal may not sound like much, but trust me, the entire experience of communion has been diminished by this act of vandalism. I believe that I know the squatters responsible. Their leader's name is Janet. She's a decker of some skill. I don't know what she has planned for my parts, but I do know that this situation will not stand. I cannot allow another terminal to be damaged. And so you want us to deal with them for you? Yes, but not with violence. <clears throat> now I want you to talk with them and convince them to bring me back my components. Do this and I'll tell you how to get to Triminius. Deal? Eh, sounds straightforward enough. Excellent. It's a deal then. Can you tell me anything uh, about this building? Beyond the hub, there isn't much to speak of. There's a small shop down the hall if you're hungry or need a basic supplies. He shrugs and offers an apologetic smile. And that's about it, I'm afraid. What about the upper levels? There are floors above us, of course, but you're unlikely to find anything of value up there. Just the domiciles of the faithful and the mendificers who have taken charge of the building. I would steer clear of them if I were you. I need to get down to the basement. Ah, uh, that would be difficult. The stairway leading down to the building's sublevels have been blocked, and the elevator has been sabotaged. It stopped working at the same time that the arbiters were driven from the building. As we discussed, if you recover my stolen property, I will tell you how to find Treminius. Otherwise, you will try your luck with Ulrich out front, but I wouldn't recommend it. Eh, uh, I don't need anything else, thanks. He incl inclines his head. Come back any time. Alright, let's see what else is in this building before we head on in. Looks like I've got some terminals around here. People getting jacked in and all that fun stuff. Okay, nothing else here. Wasn't sure. I don't. Sometimes I forget little details, so. There, yeah, we'll come back to you later. Yeah, Carl, huh? Alright, Carl. The man behind the counter looks tired. His lids are heavy and his eyes are bloodshot. Welcome to Carl's General Store. What can I do for you? I need some info. He rubs his eyes and does his best to shake himself awake. Yeah, alright. What do you want to know? What's the layout of this place? He pauses for a moment, gathering his thoughts. When his words come out, they're slow as molasses. Well, you're on the first floor. That's the hub and my shop. The, uh, the second floor has mostly been converted into makeshift apartments for people to live in. A gang squats up there. The Magnificers. Dangerous people. I'd stay away from them. The third floor is mostly housing, too. Lots of parsons, communion, crazies live up there. The Magnificers have a squad up there, too. He leans in and lowers his voice a conspiratorial whisper. Uh, pretty sure their main crib is up there, too. Don't know exactly where. What do you know about the Magnificers? They don't care about much, aside from their own magic. Whole world's one big magical pissing contest to them. Always trying to summon bigger, better spirits. Dangerous stuff, man. Must be tough having to live down here with all that's going on over your head. It ain't easy. They charge less in protection than the Arbiters did, but they don't care about keeping anything even approaching order. They just hide out in their clubhouse, get high, and summon spirits that terrorize and kill people up on the third floor. He shakes his head. Poor bastards. What do you know about the Arbiters? Bunch of tough guys. They took a big cut of my sales and protection money, all in the name of the working class. Funny, last time I checked, I was one of the working class. In fact, I'm the only one who's working in this whole damn building. He spreads his arms, a helpless look on his face. Well, at least they kept some form of law. Mugging and assaults were rare. They didn't let murderous spirits run loose on the upper floors. So, you know, you take the good with the bad. That's all the info I need for now. So, uh, you want to buy anything? Sure. Well, I'm not actually going to, but yeah, you buy. <coughs> you can buy uh, premium med kits from him, Buma, Buma No trauma kits, med kits, cram, uh, drone repair. But we can always get that back in town. But yeah, you know, for those who need it. And there's the elevator. The elevator appears to be offline. The control panel's LCD screen is unlit, and its metal casing is badly damaged, dented. Uh, if you have decking, you can check to see that's damaged, but we have to do the, the apartment building to actually get down there, because that's the second half of this adventure. So, Decking 3, examine the control panel. You usually pry the metal casing away from the wall, exposing a mess of wires and circuitry. After quick inspection, it becomes clear that this elevator is wired to operate around a control chip. The chip is missing, and it looks as though a power coupling has been yanked alongside it. Without these components, there's no way for this elevator to function. Leave the elevator alone. So yeah, we have to. We have to do this thing. So, oh. Well. <coughs> All right, there we go. Looks like both walls gave way, and they took the roof with them. The ho entire hallway is blocked with debris. I was trying to click that; it wasn't working for some reason. All right, next floor. 
Yeah, let's go to the second floor. Considering the state of the rest of the building, the stairwell looks relatively clean and intact. Okay, we can't go up to the third floor if we wish, but let's check out the second floor here. So, that oh, one. Let's see. I know one of these rooms we need to uh, be careful about encounters. So, okay. Oh gosh, target practice practice. Oh, good, you missed. Yeah, the reason I was uh, moving people around is I was trying to get uh, Iger in a good position. <clears throat> so she could shoot people, like, as soon as she's inside. So yeah, it looks like I'm only able to hit one person. Okay, Dietrich. Let's go ahead and haste and haste glory and aim with glory. And let's go ahead and adrenal pumper. Okay, so these are magnificers. Um, we're going to have to fight four of them, usually in multiple encounters. There's two standard mages, a healer, and a conjurer. You want to get rid of the healer and the conjurer first. So, let's take... I wonder if I can actually hit... Let's see. I guess we'll just get up there in the first place, so... Did that say 99% game? Well, like, people, like, were, you're watching, right? Oui. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, let us... I'm trying to think what I want to... I can't actually hit them there, can I? No. I can hit you. Yeah, that's marked target, I guess. Okay, we're at 83% misses. Cool. Well, that was 35%, so that kind of makes sense. All right, fine. Um, I usually don't go into the room, but I want to actually utilize my uh, mark target if I can. So, control mode. And Iger. Yeah, I guess the only one I'm going to hit is you, so, all right. Let's see. Probably with Glory being there, so that she kind of gets in the red. Oof, 12 damage. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, you can still hit them from here. All right. Ha! All right. Let's, uh, ah, oh, she's going to have to take a. Can I get. Oh, I can't get. Oh, well, actually, let's have Dietrich aim her before I run in there. actually hit you so <laughs> just like punch people to death basically is what uh, what she does All right, let's try to mark you again if we can there we go <clears throat> Crit damage there. Nice. And Dietrich. Let's go and get a lightning ball in there. Nice. Alright, they're all out. Now yeah, we did take a little bit of damage, but nothing, nothing we can't handle. So. Alright, got some magnificent amulets. We'll, we're going to sell these to Ulrich later when we're done with this place, so make sure to pick them up. 
Because you can get like a couple. If you pick up all the amulets in this and actually defeat the Magnificers, you can get like 2,000 plus New Yen from that. So if you're looking for a little extra money for the final end game, uh, best way to do it. So it basically resolves you with killing all the. You can choose to not kill all the Magnificers and kill the Arbiters instead, um, but you won't get as much money from it. So anyway, let's check these spell books. Let's see, we got a Power Bolt 3. I can't do anything with this, but I can always sell it later. And uh, we also get glue, which uh, cannot move, uh, which is not bad, depending on where it is. But uh, another one I can't use because I'm not a wizard. I forgot what uh, what summons if you, because I think there is a summon spot here for uh, D trick. I think it's like another apocalypse or something like that. But... All right, there's a door there we can mess with, but we're not going to mess with that right now. All right, let's go in this door. These two just tie in together, so. Let's see what this says. The communion must flourish. The communion must grow. Sounds like a cult in this. Yeah, I got some 54 new yen for that. Alright. The communion speaks and we listen. Give yourself willingly. Join us and be rewarded. Yep, it is a cult. Like all things. Anyway, we got some bliss here, so we're gonna take that. There actually is an achievement for using, I think, like five combat stems over the course of the game. So if you're looking for achievement hunting, you probably should be using that. But all you have to do is just, <clears throat> easiest way to do it would just be just take a mission, take a bunch of bliss or whatever, and then just do it back to back and then just reload. I mean, not saying that drugs aren't useful in this game because they do give a benefit. It's just, you know, there's other uses for, on this dress there's a scrap of paper with shark tank scribbled on it. Hmm, I wonder. Yeah, let's keep looking around. Yeah, it looks like I, uh, another commune, commune around here. I'm going to open up both doors because I have OCD. Otherwise, it'll mess me up all day. Nah, but, uh, why? Well, I, I do have a minor case of OCD, but it's not that bad. Not in the grand scheme of things. Yep, yeah, looks like we got a Franz, huh? Hello, I am Franz, and I am Hans, and we are here to bump you up. A group of metahumans huddles together, their eyes wide with terror. Many of them have scraps and bruises, and a few more have a serious injuries. Their clothes are tattered and stained. At your approach, a disheveled-looking middle-aged man steps forward, placing himself between you and the main group. His gray hair is barely, barely, badly matted, and a pair of battered reading glasses hang from the bridge of his nose. Who are you, may I ask, and what are you doing here? Uh, Blackwire, and you are? My name is Franz, they are my friends and my wife, we live together, well, we used to live together up on the third floor, we used to live upstairs, we yes, until about a week ago, then the Magnificers pest moved in and we had to run for our lives. Spits, you mean? He nods, a look of pure misery on his face, there's always summoning the damn things, but the last week they lost control of a handful, before we knew what was happening they were running wild in our living room. We tried to protect ourselves, but we were no match for them. He shakes his head, a haunting look in his eyes. We had no choice but to leave everything behind. We've been scraping by down here ever since. Franz takes a moment to collect himself. When he speaks again, he sounds more composed. At least Janet is letting us use our matrix uplink. We can still afford to feed ourselves, thanks to her. Uh, Janet, I need to talk to her. Could you introduce us? He looks at you over, playing, uh, paying special attention to your gear. Finally, he nods. Tell you what, if you take care of those rogue spirits, if you clear the path for us to return home, I'll give you the password. You'll need to sp uh, This password, you need to speak with Janet. We actually know what the password is, by the way, already. So, <clears throat> Now, you can uh, lie to them, saying you already cleared the spirits, um, and that would jumpstart the mission, or skip a bit of the mission. The problem is you actually lose out on some money and karma for doing that, and I want to get karma. And uh, so, just to let you know. But if you want to skip doing that, you could lie to them. Um, also, you could get the 500 new yen up front um, for uh, um, for doing it, uh, which is something worthwhile as well. So, how about a little something for the effort? Money? We don't have much. He looks away uncertainly, certainly in his eyes. But I managed to put a little away. I was hoping to surprise my wife with it. No, you're right. We can't ask you to do, uh, risk yourselves without some kind of compensation. He pulls a battered cred stick out of his pocket and presses it into your hands. Here, take it. Just make sure our home is safe again. Do you know anything about the hackers over by the stairs? Janet, you mean? Of course we know her. She and her 
bit heads control the only matrix hookup in this dump. Thankfully, she allows us to use uplink. It's only by her generosity we've been able to provide for ourselves at all, and she's kept us from having to rely on Parsons' his wacko religion, thank God. He leans towards you and lowers his voice. By the way, friends, you don't want to plug in with those communion drones. I've seen it too many times. People jack into the hub, and when they come back out, they're different. It's creepy, and it's wrong. No, different? What do you mean, different? Maybe detached is a better word. I've seen all kinds of people jack into the hub. Only one type comes back out. Quiet, subdued, disinterested, anything other than the beloved communion. Kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Dragon Age when you go through the... Uh, um, if you play as a mage in that one, um, you have to go through like a little trial. And if you don't succeed or you go crazy, you're made tranquil. And tranquil is basically acting like what he's acting like. So I don't know what happens to them in there, but they're somehow less, I don't know, less alive when they come back out. It makes my skin crawl. I need to get in there. Do you know the password? Yeah, yeah, I do. If you help us, I'll tell you. What kind of help do you need? What we need is to get back uh, home to our apartments on the next floor, but we can't do that while those spirits that Magnificus summon are terrorizing the place. If you take care of them, if you clear the path for us to return home, I'll give you the password you need to speak with Janet. Alright, I'll let you know when it's safe. Thank you so much for playing my game. Do you know where the Magnificus hideout is? Can't help you there. We used to see a lot of Magnificus up on the third floor, but I never wanted to get close to them. You want to know where the hideout is? I'd ask Parsons, or maybe step outside to ask Ulrich. Not that you're likely to get far with the other. There's no cases. What the spirits? Yes, what is it? No, no, we don't have it yet, so never mind. <clears throat> but yeah, you get karma if you legit do what you ask of them, so. Or if they ask you to do it, and you're like, all right, we'll do it, so. But yeah, we are able to get some extra money out of it. I don't quite need the money as much, but it's always nice to have a little extra. <clears throat> now, if you go through this door, we can deal with Janet right now. Uh, which is what this door is, but we're going to hold off on that. And we had to come back anyway after dealing with the uh, um, spirits. So, did I get... I forgot if I... Yes, okay, never mind. I did get everything in there. I was trying to remember. Alright, let's head on to the third floor. Alright, let's go to the third floor. Alright, let's... Uh... Let's see, I don't, I'm trying to remember if this is one of the doors I have to actually set myself up, so. Okay, that'll work. Okay, yeah, we got some spirits in here. So we got an Apocalypse or Magnifica Free Spirit, and then we've got some others around here, so. All right, let's go ahead and buff up. Um, yeah, it used to be, I, well, I mean, you still want to buff a Biker, but Glory is now our um, kind of big buffer at the first, in the first round these days. Because, you know, she's got all this stuff that it, Cruiser AP and everything like that, so. Alright. Nice bit of damage there. I think there's a like, another spear in here, and I think there's a couple spears in here, so. Alright. 86% game. Cool. I love when I miss with 86%. Should have just came in here and marked target first before, although it's a low percent chance. Hey, it hit, alright. I'll save my uh, my designated target, even though it's got such a low percentage. Alright, Iger. I mean, yeah, I could hit you from here, so. Nice. Spirit in there. Oof. Good thing I have some uh, pair stuff. Getting a bit unlucky with those uh, hits there. Let's see. Can I hit you with a designated target? Well, if it hits anyway. Probably not. The 55% are hitting, but the 80% miss. My god, you know. <clears throat> I'm just trying to think of one to just nice. All right, uh, Dietrich. Did anyone take any damage before? Other than, and I can't heal him legit that way, so. Move. 
there's the other. Yeah, not really a very good spot for Iger to be in. Oh well. Yeah, there's a couple of... Yeah, they're not close enough together to hit with that one ability, so... The creatures at Overwatch, that's funny. I mean, you can Overwatch with basically anything. I've never been really using Overwatch. Basically, Overwatch is you just click this ability here, and if someone hits within your range, you counterattack him. It hasn't been as useful for me in this game, to tell you the truth, but... I missed it. Good. Alright, let's, uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess I'll waste my turn going in there. Alright, you. Let's see, move you. Oh, nice. Got a crit in there. Ha! That's why you buy it. That's why you buy drones, baby. Nice, I blot. How? Alright, whatever. Oh, but I can hit you. Alright. Oh, is there enough? Nah, can't cast haste yet. Oops. Let's see, I think I want to. Yeah, I'll go ahead and cast that just in case he gets hit. Bailey it up, baby. Alright. I if the sniper would be better. Yeah. Let's try a crit attack. Nice. Let's see. Nah, I don't need the two targets at once. So. Nah, this might be enough damage. Oh, so close. <laughs> Alright, let's finish him off. There we go. Oh yeah, I had a gun on his head, by the way, if you didn't notice. Um, yeah, not a difficult fight, though. Alright, let's check this drawer here. Alright, we get a premium 3 for that, so let's send this to the stash. That's it for this section. Alright. So far, we're doing pretty good against those dudes. First, we've got some more Magnificers to deal with. Although, in this case, I don't really need to line up people specifically. But We got company! Blast them! <laughs> Holy crap! Alright. Guess I'll, I'll just waste a turn uh, to healing myself. Good lord. I hate when I get cheap shotted at the beginning of a fight. kind of in a yeah they didn't move close enough oh. no well, one of them got hit anyway 
Yeah, see, that's what Overwatch does, by the way. It can be useful, it's just... really depends. <clears throat> see if I can lock you down. Alright, cool. Alright, so let's get you in melee range. Oh yeah, I gotta get a... Dietrich in with a with a aim so she can hit better. Nice. Alright, get Niger in there. Shock into the face. Ha! Yeah, this one's a little easier just because of uh, the way that they move and everything like that, so. Ah. Alright, fine. Yeah, I guess shotgun would be better here. Let's see. Just see if there's anything really useful. Yeah, let's try uh, this one. Bad. Oh yeah, and I could use my drone to move through here, but that you can't even I won't let me transition for some reason. Alright, whatever, do that next turn. Dude, actually, I could just run on in. Let's see. Oh, yeah, and there's a summon there for Dietrich. Well, she can she can suffer the hits. Ouch. Oof. Well, oh well. I can at least heal her for some damage. Right, that's it for that one. Yeah, Glory took a little bit more damage than I probably should have made her. How is her HP? Yeah, and she's got free, well, free. She's got healing, so, which she gets for every mission, so. Grab all these amulets and sell them later. That's how you can tell when you killed a guy. At least it's not cutting their ears off in like in some fancy games, you know. I mean, they are dead, so it doesn't matter, but still. All right, get a nature elemental fetish. We'll save that for the end game to give to uh, Dietrich. Then we've also got the shadow conjuring ability. Creates a shadow zone in which characters cannot be targeted, nor target others. Lasts until the beginning of your next turn. So that'd be, that's nice for if you're doing a, uh, if you need them to kind of back off for a second, you know. I wouldn't say it's the best ability, but something to like basically say, hey, I, I need to run away, or I need to, this guy doesn't need to die, so I need to uh, run away for like a hot minute, so. <clears throat> anyway, let's go down here. All right, anything in here? Nope, okay. Wasn't sure, I thought there was something in this room, but okay. Now that we've taken care of all those guys, let's go ahead and go back to um, downstairs. We'll deal with the Magnificer's boss here in a second. So, yeah, we can tell the guys we took care of those spirits. Alright, back down the 
second floor. Just run, run all the way over there. About those spirits. I dealt with the spirits for you. It's safe now. All right, and for doing that legit and not lying to them or whatever, get three karma for that. So, thank you, thank you so much. There aren't many people left that put themselves in danger to help a bunch of strangers. So about that password. Ah, uh, yes, of course. The password is Shark Tank. Don't ask me why. Thanks again. You're truly a wonderful person. So yeah, come on, everyone. Those kind of people have made our home safe again. Let's go home. And there, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for playing my game. Da 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 da. So, yep. All right. But yeah, we do that for the karma. Do it all for the karma. All right, let's go talk to Janet. Now, there's a way to get into Janet's room without the Shark Tank ability. If you have a um, either a high enough charisma or um, uh, decking, you can actually just straight up go into the room. So, okay, I'm gonna save it just in case I make an accident of it. So. The door is locked. There's an intercom panel beside it, but like I said you could just bypass it. But we want to go in legit this time. This this is one of those encounters that could either be a combat encounter or not, depending on how things go. So press the intercom button. The panel buzzes and a nasal voice pours through the speaker. Uh, pass password. Password. Um, if you have Charisma Six, we can just straight up tell him. But since I changed my outfit out to something different, I don't have Charisma Six anymore. But if you have Charisma Six, you can say, "Hey, I'm a pizza delivery guy. Ended up with a few extra pizzas. I thought you'd want one. No charge." But uh, we know the password, so Shark Tank. The door unlocks with a click. Now another thing you can do is if you have Decking Eight, um, you can bypass a thing you have to do later. I don't think I have Decking Eight yet. I could buy it if I really wanted to, because I have it for it. But. Um, <clears throat> but I don't. But there's a way to go around it. I'm I'm doing this for those who don't have decking, or don't or whatever. So, all right. There's a, damn it, Janet. There she is. So, a middle-aged woman with chocolate-colored skin and shoulder-length dreadlocks look up from her PDA with a start. She's decked out in a form-fit body armor and a flash or assault rifle goes from slung to held at the ready. Who the hell are you? And how did you get the password? Um. <laughs> bribery, threats of violence, that sort of thing. I asked politely. There isn't enough of that in this world, don't you think? She gestures with a rifle. Cut the shit and start talking. What do you want and why are you here? Parson sent me. He wants his hardware back. She shakes her head violently. No way. Those parts are keeping us online and not just us, but everyone worth a million in this whole... Parsons can keep running his ridiculous little cult just fine with what he's got, but us, we're the only Matrix connections that these people have. So, <clears throat> so you could attack her if you just want to, don't want to mess with it, um, and then you could, uh, if you have don't have the intelligence, you could just tell her to back down. Or if you have an intelligence three, look, those parts can't be irreplace, uh, can't be replaceable. Let me take a look at your terminal. Maybe we can figure something out. All right, the terminal's in the back room. Go take a look. But if you try to rip us off, you're gonna regret it. So, and like I said uh, before in this game, karma is only based on certain objectives. Just fighting every single nitpicking thing does not get you karma. The only reason to fight things is if if you get karma or if you get uh, items for doing such a thing. So, The hacker's terminal has clearly been cobbled together using whatever parts they could find. In spite of this, it is a remarkably impressive piece of machinery. Studying the terminal takes almost no time to identify the components that Parsons sent you to find. Examine the terminal to see if there's if the signal converter can be removed without disabling it. At the moment, it is impossible to remove the part without disabling the terminal. The converter is required so that the signal the terminal sends can can be interpreted by data jack of its user. So, if you have decking A, you can just attempt to bypass the part and keep the terminal active, and that way you just you can skip this next step. But I'm going to show you what the next step is if you're trying to do this legit to help them. Intelligence five. Perhaps a more common part could be modified. The converter is a pretty specialized piece of hardware, but a Dayjack impulse transmitter is widely available piece of equipment. It could be converted to work in this place. Okay, step away. All right. So now we have to go back downstairs and talk to someone about that. So let's talk to her really quick. Uh, let's see. 
Jane eyes you wearily. So what'd you find? Looks like the part that you borrowed from Parsons is acting like your data jack signal converter. I think that I can couple your replacement, but I'll need a signal regularly to modify, and you don't seem to have any spares on hand. Her eyes widen. You could do that? Jury rig one for us? That'd be amazing. Don't get too excited, love. We still need that part. I bet you could just get one from Carl down on the ground floor. No one else around here would have anything like that. She checks herself. Well, except for Parsons, of course. He's got more replacement parts than he knows what to do with. All right, we'll see what I can find. So, um, the way to do this is to go through Carl. Um, but Carl can ask you for payment, and uh, <clears throat> there are ways to reduce the payment. However, I'm going to show you how to get it for free from him. Because usually he charged like a thousand initially, and then you could reduce it down a little bit more. However, if we check this frame painting, a blurry photo of Janet, probably taken surreptitiously with a cheap PDA camera, hangs in a gaudy faux bronze. So we want to, we click, the reason you click this is because it gives us an extra dialogue box, knowing that he basically peeks on Janet. Uh, so what's up to Carl? Uh, you're, you're back. He rubs his bloodshot eyes. Why? I'm looking for a data jack impulse transmitter. I've got what you need. He looks you up and down, his eyes lingering around the gear you're carrying. 1,000 yen, no less. Uh, forget it. Um, oh wait, no, sorry. Back for that transmitter. Um, uh, yeah, I got my 1,000 yen. Actually, I think you should give me the transmitter. He looks baffled. Why would I do that? So if you have Etiquette Street, um, you could do something with him. Um, uh, or you could Charisma him, but this would just lower the cost in general. What we want to do is is because you like that hacker, Janet. The shopkeeper's neck flushes red. Um, uh, what are you talking about? Come on, man, her photo is hanging right behind you. You know, it'd be a real shame if something happened to her. H happened to her? What could happen to her? W what do you mean? His bloodshot eyes go w wide. Are you threatening Janet? Think of it as more like a Fendi warning. Warning? What about? This is a dangerous situation. She won't hand over the part if it takes her terminal offline. That could get her hurt, or worse. Alright, I get your point. He you thrusts a small electronic device in your hands. Take the part and get out. Don't you hurt her. Alright. Uh, and he'll still sell us stuff at the same price. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Alright, get to the second floor. Yeah, now that we have the part. So... I think you can also go through Parsons if I remember correctly, but nah, this is the most effective way, so. Let's see if she has any extra dialogue. Do you, do you have the part? <laughs> uh, and you can still back it. I like how the game will let you back out at any time just to destroy them if you really want to, so. Alright, even though you did all this work to get to this point. Got it right here, just have to go install it. She visibly relaxes just a little. Bad time someone had some good new, good new around here. I think that meant to say news, so, oh well. Go ahead and install it right away. So even this game suffers from some um, um, issues of dialogue and all that. Oh well. Anyway. The hacker's terminal has clearly been cobbled together using... Oh yeah, we were at this before, so... Impulse transmitter. Modify the impulse transmitter and replace the signal converter with it. After a few minutes of work, the transmitter is modified and installed. You now have the converter and the terminal is still working. Step away. Alright. So now... We got that, so... She looks at you expectantly. So, all fixed up. Everybody wins. You got your terminal, and I've got my parts. You see the tension drain out of her. Thank you. I'm glad you could end. Th this could end without bloodshed. There's been enough of that around here recently. Yeah, sure. Sure looks that way. All right. Now that we've done that, we need to go back downstairs to talk to Parson and tell him, and that way we can also get the um, information about the uh, magickers. So let's go back to the ground floor. Tell him about his situation, so. <clears throat> the attendant behind the counter is an uncommonly... Oh, yeah, just the same description. You think it'd be different this time? Um, welcome to the hub, brother. Are you here to share in the splendor of the communion? If so, I can help you in an empty terminal. I've recovered the parts for your terminal. Ah, uh, excellent, my brother. Let me see them, if you please. Parsons' smile disappears for a moment as he stays apart. His brow furrows in concentration. As suddenly as it disappears, the smile returns. Yes, these are the parts that I need. Thank you, friend. I trust that there is no trouble, that you were able to attain them without bloodshed. Of course, we never spit blood when we don't have to. That's a lie. Uh, Parsons' face lights up. Oh, that is wonderful news. Truly, truly wonderful. Now I have my end of the deal to uphold. 
If you're still hell-bent on meeting with Treminius, take the stairs up to the third floor. You'll find an abandoned apartment at the end of the hall. Look for the stylized M painting on the wall. It looks like two crude lightning bolts facing one another. That's Treminius's personal sigil. There's an old bookcase in the very back of the apartment, under the second shelf from the bottom. You'll find a bottom that opens the bottom to the Treminius hideout. How do you know all this all those well? Because that abandoned apartment was once mine. In the days before I discovered the peace of communion, I was a very different man. I had need of such contrivances, his smile whines. But not anymore. Finally, I am at peace. I don't need anything. It's six. Come back any time. All right. Well, now we have what we need to deal with Treminius. How will we deal with Treminius? Will we work with the mages and deal with their nerdery? Will Ulrich get all the amulets? Or will we find a way to make ourselves happy on our way to the end? And how will we deal with the apex predator at the bottom of this place? The answer may surprise you. But find out next time in the next episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.